For this problem, we'll start off by making a little diagram. So the speedy Sue is moving at 30 meters per second, and the band is moving at 5 meters per second in the same direction. As you can see, we made different lengths of velocity vectors to represent the speeds. Then they are 155 meters apart, and speedy Sue is slowing down at an acceleration of negative 2 meters per second squared, meaning her velocity is decreasing. So here, let's look at Speedy Sue. Her car is in uniformly accelerated motion. To analyze the situation better, we can put the starting point of Sue's car at 0 meters and the end point of the van at 155 meters. Now let's write a UAM equation for Sue's car. Her displacement equals initial velocity times time plus 1 half acceleration times time squared. We can write the displacement as final position minus initial position and copy down the rest. Then we know her initial position is zero, so that term just cancels out. The van, however, is not slowing down, which means it's moving at a constant velocity. We can denote this simply by saying the velocity of the van is just the change in its position over the change in time, which is position final minus position initial and time final minus time initial. We can once again cancel out time initial because our scenario starts at time zero. It is important to note here that when we wrote time in these spots right here, we did the same analogy that we just did, and we just canceled that initial time because we started at time zero. So these two are time finals. Anyways, if we continue solving our equations for the van, we can manipulate it such that we can isolate our final position for the van in this situation as well, by multiplying both sides by time final and adding initial position to both. If we rewrite the equation for Speedy Sue, you can see that both of these equations have been solved for the position final of both the vehicles. And we also know that if the two vehicles were to collide, that means their final positions would be the same. Similarly, their final times would be the same as well, because that would be the time of collision for both. So there are two main methods to go from here. First is by using a graphing calculator. Here we can set the final positions as y, the output, and time as x, our input value. So let's input those variables and our values into our equations. This one becomes y equals 30 times x plus 1 half times negative 2 times x squared. And this one becomes y equals 5x plus 155. Now let's input those equations into a graphing calculator. Now let's look at our points of intersection, and there are two of them. But we're going to disregard the second one because, chronologically, if the first collision occurs, the cars won't really be moving for the second collision to occur. We'll only look at the point that comes before, or that comes first on the x-axis. So judging by our coordinate, our vehicles would crash at 211.91 meters from the start at the time of 11.382 seconds from the start as well. We can also just solve the rest of the equations algebraically by plugging one of the equations into the other. Since both of them have been solved for the final position, we can just set them both equal to each other. Now, we need to only find the final time here, and they no longer have the v and s subscript because both of their times have to be the same, so we can isolate our variable properly. Since there is a t-square in this, we probably need to factor, so let's add all of the terms on one side. Now we can start plugging in values, 1 half times negative 2 times squared plus 30t minus 5t minus 155, we can simplify this a bit to put it in the format of ax squared plus bx plus c. Since this isn't factorable by a whole number, we have to use the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and let's plug in our values, so negative 25 plus minus the square root of 25 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 155, all over 2 times negative 1. So if we solve that using a calculator, we can get that t either equals 11.38196 or 13.61803. But once again, we'll have to account for the time that comes first because that's when the collision will actually occur, and since 11.38 is less than 13.6, we'll have to eliminate 13.6, and that means the time is 11.38. Now we can plug in our time to either one of these equations. I'll use the Wann's equation since it's easier. And as you can see, we got almost the same answer of 211.909. And as always, the notes are in the comments. Thank you for watching!